Luke 8, 26 through 39. They sailed to the region of Gerasenes, which is across the lake from Galilee. When Jesus stepped ashore, he was met by a demon-possessed man from town. For a long time, this man had not worn clothes or lived in a house, but had lived in the tombs. When he saw Jesus, he cried out and fell at his feet, shouting at the top of his voice, What do you want from me, Jesus, son of the most high God? I beg you, don't torture me. For Jesus had commanded the impure spirit to come out of the man many times, and it seized him. And though he was chained hand and foot and kept underground, he had broken his chains and had been driven by the demon into solidarity places. Jesus asked him, what is your name? Legion, he replied, because many demons had gone into him, and they begged Jesus repeatedly not to order them to go into the abyss. A large herd of pigs was feeding there on the hillside. The demons begged Jesus to let them go into the pigs, and he gave them permission. When the demons came out of the man, they went into the pigs, and the herd rushed down the steep bank into the lake and was drowned. When those tending the pigs saw what happened, they ran off and reported this in the town and countryside, and the people went out to see what happened. When they came to see Jesus, they found the man from whom the demons had gone, sitting at Jesus' feet, dressed and in his right mind, and they were afraid. Those who had seen it told the people how the demon-possessed man had been cured. Then all the people of the region of Jerusalem asked Jesus to leave them because they were overcome with fear. So he got into the boat and left. The man from whom the demons had gone begged to go out with him. But Jesus sent him away, saying, Return home and tell how much God has done for you. So the man went away and told all over the town how much Jesus had done for him. God bless the reading of this word. I am boy. It says God in his driving permit. He asked his father, who was a minister, if they could discuss the use of the God. His father took him to the study and said to him, I'll make a deal with you. You bring up your grades, study your Bible, get your hair cut, and we will talk about it. After about a month, the boy came back and again asking his father if they could discuss use of the car. They again went to the father's study where his father said, Son, I have been real proud of you. You have brought your grades up. You have studied your Bible, but you didn't get your hair cut. The young man waited a moment and replied, you know that? I have been thinking about that. You know, Samson had a long hair. Moses had a long hair. Noah had long hair. And even Jesus had a long hair. To which his father replied, You are right. And they are all walk everywhere they went. <laughs> And I invite all the fathers, please, would you stand if you are able, please. Please give a big hand to all the fathers from here. for what you did and what you are doing in this church. Your time and your service in this church. You did a great things over here, tremendous work you did. By the way, your faith, we thank you for sharing your faith with us. And let us pray 
for the fathers. We give you thanks, Creator God, for the fathers in our lives. Fatherhood does not come with a manual. And reality teaches us that some fathers excel while others fail. We ask for your blessing for them all and forgiveness where it is needed. This Father's Day we remember the many sacrifices fathers make for their children and families and the ways both big and small they lift children to achieve dreams thought beyond reach. So too, we remember all those who have helped fill the void when fathers passed early or are absent grandfathers, uncles, brothers and cousins, teachers, pastors, and coaches, and the women of our families. For those who are fathers, we ask for wisdom and humility in the face of the task of parenting. Give them the strength to do well by their children and by you. In your holy name we pray. Amen. We live in the world there's so many chaos. There's war between Russia and Ukraine. Not only that, we have economical chaos. We have Jesus chaos. We have nation chaos. The price of the gasoline causes us a lot of chaos. The cost of living causes us too much of a chaos. And the business finding a way by selling the product same price with less quantity inside. And the chaos caused people confuse, discourage, and hard for them to walk forward with love and hope and joy. And the reading this morning talk about a man demon possessed. At the same time, the man finding a way to get out from the chaos of life. And my title for this morning, BAM! Can you say it? BAM! BAM! Yeah. Yeah. It's only the man. I didn't hear any soft voice. <laughs> Can we do it again? My title for this morning is BAM! BAM! Bam. <laughs> that's it! That's it! <laughs> and I wonder, people are speaking, I'm chaos finding what this BAM means. Be a man. When we celebrate the Father's Day, they are the men. They sacrifice their lives in many ways. And you know that the life expectancy for the men is lower than the women. 
because they love to do things physically. They lost their lives, they sacrificed their lives, and now we walk freely in a nation that we love. Pretty soon in July, we celebrate that. But here it says that Jesus, according to St. Luke, once said Jesus and his disciple sailing on the lake to the other side. And they called that area his guest greens. And while one day that Jesus was with his disciple on the lake, and all of a sudden there was a storm that's causing a chaos between Jesus and his disciples. And the disciple tried to walk Jesus, said, Jesus, we are in trouble. And Jesus says, one way, silent, be still. And all the chaos of the lake stop. So when Jesus is walking into our lives, there is something changed in us. But for this morning, after the chaos, and Jesus stopped the chaos of the lake, now he's dealing with our own chaos in our lives. And the readings, and I thanks for the readings for this morning, was clearly saying they sail to the region of the Kesrines, which is across the lake. And I want you to imagine why Jesus is going over there, dealing with the chaos of the lake. He want to deal with our chaos, especially this man that we are about to talk about it. And when Jesus stopped ashore, he was met by a demon-possessed man. Then Jesus stopped, and the man is walking to meet with Jesus in the middle to deal with his own problem. And when demons possess our lives, we never control our lives. And somehow, sadly, in our lives, we don't want to get rid of all the demons that we have inside our lives, but we left a little bit over there in our lives. And here is to identify the demon possessed man face things no clothes. So when demon walk into our lives, he makes something in us to remove the identity of ourselves, the identity of a man. Bad. That's removing the clothes of someone is disrespect. No respect at all. And that's how demon walk into our lives. Take everything out from us. Our identity is no longer with us, disrespecting us. Not only that, but the second thing that Luke said, he was not living in the house. Which made this man, the demon possessed him, remove what he owned, not only that, but kick him out from his house. Imagine. <coughs> He's a good man. But because the demon possessed, 
cause him of so many chaos in his life. Remove his clothes, kick him from the house, and you know where he lived. He lived in the tombs. So when people walk in with the food in respect to their loved ones and put on the top of the cemetery, that's where he got the food from. He stole things to be survived. When our lives demon walk in the way, all he can do is just destroying us. And he loved to do it. I remember one day we had so exceeding on a snow night the youths and the other girls gave coffee, hot coffee. Hot coffee, sorry. In Utah there's no coffee of in their mom's land. And cookies and everything they had. And I saw a homeless just walking through his seat, so cold. And I look at me. I have a beautiful jacket. Let's keep me warm. I says, okay. If I won't help this person, maybe this is last night. I gave my jacket to him, and all my youth and young adults were looking at They opened their eyes. Because when the demon walked into our lives, they remove everything to identify who we are. And our job to return back the identity for the people they lost the identity. This man had no clothes, no home, no house, living in the tombs. That's where the demon lives. When he saw Jesus, he cried out and fell at his feet, shouting in the top of his voice, What do you want with me? Jesus, son of the most high God. saying something very important for Jesus. When well, Jesus is already know what's going on. My disciple didn't know who I am. Who am I? And now the demons just mentioned to me I'm the most high God. And be careful when the demons say something to you. Because if he said this to me, oh man, my shoulder will be above his heart. But Jesus realized what is going on. He is not coming to the earth to lift him up, but to heal those who are sick and lift up those who their lives on the floor. I want you. Please don't take your focus from that man. Because later, that man will be bad. For Jesus has commanded the impure spirit, come out of the man. And many times it has seized him. And though he was chained hand and foot and kept under God. This man mentioned Jesus because he was not having a freedom like you and me. Because mostly his life had been chained. And sometimes he broke that chain where he went he went to the desert. No hope. 
run away from the tombs to the desert land with no hope. But Jesus walked into his life and gave him hopes. And this is how Jesus is dead. He says, what is your name? What is your name? Jesus wants to know his name, especially the demon inside himself. And the reading for this point is a legion. And he know legion in the Romans' armies, one legion is about 3,000 to 4,000 soldiers. Imagine there's 3,000, 4,000 demons inside this man. How powerful he was. How chaos he had in his life. And Jesus started walking slowly to himself. And they begged Jesus. The, the demon, many demons inside begging Jesus repeatedly not to order them to go into the abyss. Because abyss for the Jewish people is mean underground prisons. You are locked. You are not going to escape. You bury down, dig down. There's no way for you to escape. But the people, the demon inside this man packing him not to destroy them, not to keep your judgment day for them, but allow them to be something else. Not on a beast. Jesus was agreeing with that. And Jesus trying to build the confidence in this man, chasing his life to become a man. To be a man. A large herd of a pigs was feeding there on the hillside. There were so many pigs on the hillside. The demons begged Jesus to let them go into the pigs over there. Yeah, that's okay. They are happy to go inside the pigs. But they didn't know what Jesus is trying to do. And all the bits drown in the lake. So that Jesus is dealing with the chaos in our lives, bearing down and allow us to walk freely with him. Because the only key to open up freedom for those where demon possess is to have Jesus inside their lives. Listen carefully, clearly. When those standing the big saw what that happened, they ran off and reported this in town and countryside, and the people went out to see what had happened. They didn't come over there. You know what's what happened? Because in economically for them, selling pigs make a lot of money, but now they all drown. They ran over there because of that. What Jesus did, but they didn't know that Jesus is dealing with the spirit of that person. And give him freedom for his life. They ran to see what's going on, and this is what they found. They ran to see the pigs, and this is what they found over there. Because the expectation was different 
from Jesus' expectation. When they came to Jesus, they found a man from whom the demons have gone out sitting at Jesus' feet. The man who had distant from Jesus, owned by the demon, Jesus removed the demons from him now on Jesus' feet. What about you? What about you? Do you want to live in the chaos in your life and continue to live on? Or you want to be on Jesus' feet? And here it is. When this man on Jesus' feet dressed, remember, he didn't have any dressed, lost everything, and now Jesus you are the man. I dress you up. Not only dress you up, I'll give you the right mind. For the fathers over here, God already dressed us as a father. You are not big to be the fathers. God knows what is going on. They dress you with his grace and give you a right mind to decide what is right, what is wrong, to protect your family, to guide your family, to comfort them when they have chaos in their lives. We have so much responsibilities as a father. And he lived today in Philip, bam! I'm a man. I went through a lot of my life. And finally I met Jesus. And Jesus changed my life. He dressed me up and gave me a right mind to do what is right. And to let the world know that I have something to hold inside me as a father to protect my family. You know, there were so many people thinking, why not many fathers in the church? And we know if the fathers come into church, he will bring his sons and grandsons the church. But our generation changes. Fathers have so many responsibilities. Mostly Sunday, long time ago, there's no sport, no games. Maybe a father or mother out there look after their children and clapping and standing and running on the sideline, go, go, go. And we are here as a father bending our knees. Jesus, bless the people who have you dressed them with your grace in the right mind to decide what is right, what is wrong in the life. My father was a teacher. And some night, I slept early and I didn't hear his voice saying a prayer. But sometime I woke up between two and four o'clock. He bent his knee and lift up without the prayer. I won't be here for you. He had so many responsibilities, but he never forget to be on Jesus' feet. And I'm proud of him. He's 
no longer here. But every time I move to a new church, wherever he was, if he's Tonga, Australia, or New Zealand, he flew to America to go with me to my new appointment. At this time, I miss him. But I'm proud of him. And I know all of you. And I'm sorry if you feel like your dad is not present in your life. But the majority of them. They have the right mind. And they hold you with the grace that God already addressed them to their father. For all the fathers of them, when I saw your face, remind me of my dad. But I never forget. When he heard that I am going to the ministry, he was not reluctant. One day he came and he told me, Tabitha, everywhere I went, I remember you. And sometimes I feel like I can bring some food to you with your family. Say, Dad, look at me. The pastor at your church is your son. When he feel the love towards me, give to him all day. If you feel like I'm going to give this food for my son, give to him. Oh, yeah. It's your son. Because when I go to the other church, when I say to the church, People over there say, my dad, they fed me, they comfort me, they pray for me, they walk for me. The Father's here, may God go to him as a blessing. Maybe next time, I wish they have a path go somewhere, I can invite you to go over there and have beer and Happy, there's no one care for us. I <laughs> pay me next year. I'm gonna take with the cruise. We go there, let them worship our way, and then we are gone. We are waiting to be blessed. Let us pray. God, bless the fathers. May your power, may your spirit be with them. Bless those, they are in the elderly homes and counting their last days over there or in their house or in their home. Bless the fathers in the military and bless the fathers they are in jail. Bless the fathers they are homeless. Bless the father they are sick. They no longer feel like being responsible for anything. God bless them. No matter what, I'm asking you. And bless all the fathers here with us today. We give our life to your God. We want to be a man, a godly man. Man. Be a man in Jesus' name we pray. Amen.